for Treasure and I am here to show you my not so stunning sales from yesterday. <laughs> this is the life of a reseller. There are ups and there are downs. Um, but I made a promise to myself. Um, I don't know if I made it to you or not as the viewer, but I did make a promise to myself. I would make a video every day that I ship things out, whether it's awesome, whether it's not awesome. So at least today I have more than one item to ship out. So, um, and you know what, honestly, okay, let's dial all that back. Um, for, honestly speaking, my sales were not terrible yesterday. They're just not what my goals currently are at this stage of my business. Um, there could be any number of reasons as to why that is. We don't really have to go into them here. Um, but I do want to show you what is currently selling for me. Um, and just know that I have already had some great sales for tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow because tomorrow might be a little bit more exciting. But today is still fine because today we still had four sales. We had two on eBay and two on Poshmark. Um, which I'm actually thrilled about. So um, to have two sales in a day on Poshmark, for me, that's amazing. Because honestly, Poshmark is kind of like, okay, um, secondary to eBay. eBay is primary in my mind because, um, mainly because there are just so many more eyeballs on eBay than there are on Poshmark. So to me, that just makes sense that that's where I should put my time and energy. So... Um, I do cross post pretty much every single one of my listings except for my postcards. My postcards, I only put them on eBay just because that would just be a nightmare trying to keep track of them on other platforms. Can't do it. Um, where was I going with that? I lost my train of thought. It just went, oh, I do cross post everything. Um but I only cross post to one other platform at a time. At some point I will change that approach, but for right now that's what works for me. So I always list it on eBay and then I cross post it either to um, Poshmark or Facebook or Mercari. That's what I do. So my two sales from Poshmark, let me show you. Number one is, oh, I have to show both of these because otherwise it won't make sense. Um, these are cute, little velvet loafers sugar and spice. Now these are Jack Rogers and Draper James collaboration, which is kind of faded inside. You can't really see that. Um, Draper James is Reese Witherspoon's line. It used to be really great. It's not great so much anymore. And Jack Rogers, it, I mean, it's an expensive brand of shoe, but it doesn't typically sell for a lot of money um, or it takes forever or it just never sells. So um, the personally, I think it's because like the shoes I've picked up, they look incredibly uncomfortable. Maybe that's just my 45 year old self talking. I don't know, maybe, but they just don't look comfortable. To me, comfort trumps cute any day, but I still do wanna be cute. So trying to find a comfort that meets cute is difficult. I don't know what I'm talking about today, but um, <laughs> Jack Rogers Draper James shoes, velvet shoes, sold on Poshmark for $20. Bam, out the door. Now, let me see. I hope I didn't pay too much money for these because um, I didn't make a lot of money. I paid $4.12, so that's not bad, actually. $4.12, they have been listed since July of last year, and I picked them up at Unique. Um, if y'all don't know, Unique is basically like our Savers, and actually, Savers bought our Unique, um, but it's still branded as Unique. Still, the sign on the door is Unique, all the tags say Unique. I don't know, but my points or my account, my rewards, whatever, can be used between the two stores. So 
I don't know. They just like to confuse us. Okay, this is Patagonia, which I seem to be finding a lot of here lately, which I'm not complaining. This sold for $35. It's a quarter zip pullover sweatshirt. I couldn't find like the name of this. Um, so I just ended up, that's just what I put. Quarter zip sweatshirt, size small, Heather Gray pullover kangaroo pocket. And it sold for $35 and it sold fairly quickly. So that's awesome. And let's see, I want to say I got this at uh, Savers. Let's see though. Do, 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 do. I paid $7.50, which makes me think I got that at my Goodwill. That is very true. I did. Got that at my Goodwill. And it has only been listed for about 14 days. So that was a fairly quick sale. Not too bad. Not sad about that at all. Okay, so now on to eBay, where I had a grand total of two sales yesterday. Um, let's see, I had this sale. These are Fry shoes. Um, you can always tell it when you're just glancing over the shoes, there's that telltale logo right there. Um, hopefully I'm holding that at the exact angle so you can see. These are not in the best shape in the world, so they only sold for $20, but that's fine. I didn't pay a whole lot, um, and they are going out the door $20. Let me see, I just wanna see, maybe I did pay a lot. Um, do, 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 looking it up, $4.12. So, wow, okay, so I got that at Unique as well. And they have been listed for just about three weeks. So that's not bad, $4.12 into $20. I like it, and it was a fairly quick flip, so I like that also. And then I sold another postcard yesterday. This is pretty cool. This is Castlegate at Price River Canyon, I guess, in Utah. And then it has that railroad, that line, D and RG, which is Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. It is unposted, unmarked on the back. That sold for $4.50. I did have it priced higher, and honestly, I think it probably could have sold for more. But I've mentioned this before, when someone makes an offer on a postcard, that's a pretty serious collector. That's the amount that they can spend to add that item to their collection. And honestly, it to me, from what I've been able to gather, for a lot of categories of, not categories, but um, subject matter for postcards, the market is exactly what a buyer is willing to pay. So I can throw a price out there I can go based on comps, but if you try and base it on comps, it is very bewildering because a lot of sellers, a lot of postcard sellers will do auctions and they'll start it at like 25 cents or something ridiculous. So you'll have a some sell at auction for less than a dollar. And so I don't really comp my postcards very much, to be honest. If they have something like this that has a railroad in the picture, um, that then that expands the amount of buyers because then you have not just postcard collectors, but you have railroad collectors. Now, there was not an actual train or car in the picture. So that, you know, is it really worth as much as I was asking? I think I had a price at $9.99. Um, probably not. So, um, to me, and this is honestly, this is true in a, in a, in capitalism, but the buyer determines the market. So if a buyer sends me an offer of what he's willing to pay for a postcard that I've only put five or 10 cents into, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to take it because <laughs> that's what he's willing to pay. And it could be six months before I have another buyer come along who wants to buy that postcard. So that's just my thoughts on how and why I price my postcards. I may be right, I may be wrong. I don't know, comment below. What do you think? Do you even sell postcards? 
Do you have a desire to sell postcards? Do you think I'm crazy for selling postcards? <laughs> um, okay, so those are my four sales um, going out the door today. I already have a truly fantastic sale. Um, you'll have to tune in tomorrow to see what you think about it. I don't know, maybe I priced it too low. Um, it's super adorable, super adorable. But you'll have to uh, tune in tomorrow to see what's on today. Bye.